claimed that some of those being questioned were in touch with them. The gunman is said to have been given 1.8 million and 200,000 shillings to buy the weapon for the mission. Well, it's a very interesting read in the dailies this morning. Riddle of governor and a dead hitman. And of course, it is an ongoing investigation. So of course, we have to wait for the investigating agencies to uh, finish up with that investigation and probably get to the bottom of the matter. One interesting headline, and this is on the back page of the Daily Nation this morning, and uh, I mentioned earlier, is probably s one of those headlines that could be described as a positive headline from the Houses of Parliament today, which is a bit rare. Mm. Yes, unfortunately. <coughs> it's not that rare. Uh, we we the rarely good, encounter. The good never gets to get to the We rarely headlines. encounter very positive <laughs> headlines from uh, the National <laughs> Assembly. But plans uh, by the government to finance its uh, three uh, trillion uh, shilling budget suffered a setback yesterday after the National Assembly thwarted its proposal to impose uh, excess duty on fees charged for money transfer services as contained in the finance bill. That is just one. The MPs also defeated uh, a move uh, to uh, impose 16% VAT on uh, fuel, which mm -hmm. was going to take effect as from tomorrow. September, yeah. For the 1st of September, that yeah. would have meant that uh, a litre of fuel uh, would have cost as high as 130 shillings. Uh, in uh, different areas in Nairobi, but uh, we do have a member of the Finance Committee. Uh, do you agree with the, what Parliament has done? Well, on, uh, on the extension of the application of excess duty on VAT on fuel, that I support, uh, so that it is, it is done in the next two years. But on the rejection of Robin Hood tax, I think I, I'm, I'm opposed to what Parliament did mm. uh, uh, in yesterday. Because as a committee, we made, uh, we made certain amendments to the, to, the, to the bill, which basically was going to enhance uh, revenue for government. And also to ensure that uh, uh, we, because the purpose of the Robin Hood tax was basically to tax the rich. And this country must be able to tax the rich. There's no other avenue where we are going to find the rich other than in their financial uh, transactions. And uh, the minister was, uh, the treasury was well in its thoughts to bring this bill into parliament. The, of course, when it, the, the bill in its entirety was not very good, but we made certain uh, mm -hmm. amendments, which was going to ensure that actually the financial institutions were going to be taxed more, more than even the, the uh, 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 customers were transacting in those, uh, in those financial institutions. So the fact that the parliament re decided to reject this, uh, this bill in its entirety, to me, was not in order, and I want to appeal to the president to recommit <laughs> this bill back to <coughs> parliament so that it can be reconsidered. Mm -hmm. Because it is not, look, we went and passed the budget, the expenditure side of the of budget, but the revenue side of the budget is what is in the finance bill. Mm -hmm. So with all those uh, humongous uh, projects we had put in the budget, we must find a way, as a country, we must find a way of raising, raising revenue. Yeah. And we are not going to raise revenue through public debt, because the other option that we are going to have is public debt. And Kenyans must, if Kenyans want services, they must, must be ready to pay for those services. Pay for them. That is the position that we must, Parliament must understand. Mm -hmm. Because we are going to go into the ground and we are going to find roads which must be done. Some of the and arguments. How are we going to do those roads if we do not trace yes. Some of the arguments uh, put forth uh, by those who opposed that uh, uh, excess duty was the fact that uh, probably some people who want to transfer money simply for payment of salaries of their employees or uh, other things and salaries could be as high as half a million shillings or more we, we uh, will be affected by this we actually we th there are exemptions that we made in the in the law and we have still given the minister the cabinet secretary for treasury the powers that if you feel this this uh, you are affected by this law you can only you can go back to him and explain and intervene and he's able to waive so we we we, we, we have given a very good platform for this law to be effective and there's no reason why Parliament refused to listen to, to the report of the committee, mm -hmm. which was which was very extensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we we like for instance, tra internal transfers. You are transferring money from your account to, to your other account in another bank. You don't pay the law doesn't the tax doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. You are um, paying government. You are paying tax. The law doesn't apply. You are uh, the government is paying somebody. The law doesn't apply. But there are people who are transferring humongous amounts of money, five hundred million. 200 million, you are basically a rich man. Mm -hmm. So we must be find a way of doing this. And I think it was a well thought mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. uh, tax proposals, okay. which, which I want to appeal to the president and uh, as a committee 
that this must be brought back to parliament so that it can be it can be recommitted yes uh, <coughs> do, do, do you think that uh, the only way to raise money of course uh, the government has really been accused of uh, going the debt way yes. uh, but uh, more taxation uh, do you think that uh, that's the best way uh, that it's either debt or more taxation well while well, I sympathize <coughs> with Mweshima Tande's committee uh, I think they sh we should be more innovative we must see the loopholes through which we are losing money mm -hmm. as you know uh, and it's not because uh, of the Jubilee alone. Almost every government mm -hmm. has been losing about 30% mm -hmm. of, of the budgeted money. Yes, through corruption? Mm -hmm. Through corruption, misappropriation, fil pilferage, or uh, waste. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if we were to reduce the loopholes through which we lose revenue, we'll be able to save up to one trillion yes. in, the, in the case of Kenya. And uh, that is money that will be available. And we need to be prudent. Which projects are we financing? Are we financing projects that whose return on investment will take so long? So that those are some of the issues. And uh, finally, we, we must also ask ourselves, when you put 18, 16% VAT on fuel, what you are telling Kenyans is that you're going to, to, to make the cost of living quite unbearable, starting with the matatu, starting with food stuff, mm -hmm. and many other products. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is like you are taking away from the poor what should go back to them. Yes. And therefore, th the president's agenda on food security will have been minimized because when food becomes expensive, uh, inflation comes in, and uh, now there is a challenge that the poor will not be able to afford a decent meal a day. Mm -hmm. That is where the problem is. W so we must be innovative. About the transfers, I think the committee must also raise the bar. Half a million is very little money nowadays. It is not really a lot of money. Because any transaction, even ordinary person, mm -hmm. like uh, those of us who are not even in parliament, almost every month you spend more than a million shillings on basic things like paying for the services in the farm, uh, paying bills for relatives and so forth. So I have a million being transferred from my account to somebody's account is very little money. Mm -hmm. They should have raised the bar. Do you think I the Treasury is <coughs> simply being uh, simplistic in its approach to raising revenue? That, okay, fine, if at all it's not debt, mm. pay more tax. I actually, <laughs> I was just telling Atandi, the, the, the committee never really convinced the House, mm -hmm. actually, in terms of what he's explaining. Because uh, I agree with Honorable Kirwa that every year mm -hmm. we are told 400 billion is not explained. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot tell where it went. 400 billion, this is 3 trillion. Mm -hmm. How long would it take to recoup mm -hmm. that? It is mm -hmm. how many years? Mm -hmm. Four? Maybe? Mm -hmm. And you're almost at 3 trillion. Mm -hmm. I think the government must also be innovative and think outside the box because you can't just say 500,000 because 500,000 if you go to Gikomba today the traders mm -hmm. in Gikomba mm -hmm. 500,000 is not a lot of money mm -hmm. where they buy mm -hmm. in bulk and sell and supply and they are just your typical trader mm -hmm. someone maybe who has not even gone to school mm -hmm. but they transact in 500,000 maybe in a week or in a month mm -hmm. depending on how they are buying their consignments and how they are doing their business so this this one was not going to work the issue of fuel i don't think anyone should even try to to, to defend it i know it was passed in 2013 it was supposed to take effect actually now this time but it has been delayed for two years for obvious reasons mm -hmm. because when a border border ride that was a hundred bob now mm -hmm. becomes 150 shillings everyone it is spirals down to the Mwananchi mm -hmm. and is affected directly it's mm -hmm. not even indirect that one is directly mm -hmm. whether you're buying paraffin whether you using Boda Boda or a Matatu. In fact, the Matatu owners had already sounded warning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by September, which is this, wi this um, weekend. It's, it's this tomorrow. Weekend. It's tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. We should be able to hike prices, even for Matatus. And they said, we will not protest. Mm -hmm. What we will do, we will transfer. transfer. We will simply transfer that VAT to you. Mm -hmm. And the person who will have suffered here is the Monanchi. So I think this one cannot even be defended. We sympathize with the government, but mm -hmm. we must mm -hmm. seal mm -hmm. the loopholes how we lose money pilferages in government, this corruption, that is the only way to save enough money yes. and shoulder the, and uh, insulate mm -hmm. the common monarchy from the effects of high cost of yes. living mm -hmm. and for us to be able to achieve the big four mm -hmm. in this fight mm -hmm. for food security, yes. for manufacturing, mm -hmm. because when fuel goes high, who even starts to manufacture mm -hmm. in this country? Everything they run away. High. But mm -hmm. Honorable Summertime, mm -hmm. don't you think that your committee would have done Kenyans a favor mm -hmm. and probably worked on uh, innovative ways uh, for government to raise uh, revenue as opposed to actually rubber stamping proposed uh, uh, higher taxation? Well, uh, well, the committee has done a good job. You remember the tax proposals are sent to us by Treasury and we 
we undertake public public, public participation and also uh, uh, listen to Kenyans on those most of those tax proposals I want to say that my committee did a very good job uh, in looking at the tax proposals and how they can work there are so many things that we have done like uh, in the area of tax administration uh, we have brought recommendations that will make uh, KRA more efficient and be able to uh, to improve the way the, the efficiency and help uh, in uh, uh, in, uh, improving their tax uh, collections. So we are, there are so many things that the committee has done. Uh, there are certain things that Professor the committee rejected, which were also obviously, uh, like the interest cap law, we basically mm -hmm. agreed with Kenyans mm -hmm. on the need for uh, the interest cap law to be retained. But on uh, the uh, area of, uh, there's also the area of, uh, which I've also read here, uh, which a colleague of mine is bringing on the floor of the house, the area of public debt. And m m you have read it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is also an area which is very sensitive. Remember the question, Kenyans are saying that, uh, that, the, that the, the tax, we have hit almost six trillion, five trillion right now. And he's trying to, uh, to put a selling on the tax. Mm -hmm. But from where I sit. On public debt. Yes, on public But from where I sit, the question is not, it's not, it's not the size of the tax, the, the public debt. The question is the structure of the public debt. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the, the structure of public debt as it is right now, it is not really bad. There's just a small toxic, toxic uh, part of that debt which needs to be addressed. Uh, the, the debt, uh, the, the commercial de uh, debt, this commercial debt which is around, uh, around one billion. That is, the, that is the one that is very expensive. And also- One billion? Yes, uh, there's one around one billion, billion of commercial debt. One billion, or one, billion or one, one trillion, one trillion, one trillion, one trillion, yeah, yeah, one trillion, yeah. <laughs> one trillion of commercial debt. Yeah. That is one which is toxic, and also, as a country, we need to find a way in which we are going to to address this issue in totality. We must go the Ghana route. You know, Ghana brought somebody, some people to buy their domestic debt. So then, after that, then they were given a grace period of uh, I think five years. With with, the, with that grace period, then the country the country is going to can be able to restructure their uh, debt portfolio. And after five years, then they can begin to pay it. That is the only route that is going to save us. Because right now, the biggest problem is really not even uh, foreign debt. It's actually the domestic debt. Okay. The government yeah. continues to borrow in the domestic market. Yeah. The government has, has crowded this market to an that even commercial banks now cannot lend to, to the yeah. private sector. Okay. And yeah. this is going to be a very big challenge. But do you agree with, uh, uh, with the two <coughs> other panelists that uh, probably the government uh, and parliament should help uh, the executive focus more on uh, getting, uh, fixing the loopholes and uh, avoiding pilferage and uh, corruption in government because uh, according to Kenyans, you just tax me more uh, for those people to eat money. Well, well, corruption in government is, uh, happens more on the large projects, large ticket projects, and most of them are funded by debt. That again, why the problem is because if you want to address corruption in road projects, a road which is going to cost 10 billion, you find that maybe 1 billion or 2 billion is going to go to corruption in terms of, I don't know, commissions and ETC. So that's, that's really why we are supposed to address corruption. And it is not, it, you, you not do it through, you cannot do it in a way that it, it affects the revenue you are raising. It mm -hmm. needs to be addressed through the uh, uh, systemization of the projects and ensuring that the projects also are done within the, within the, the timelines. Mm -hmm. Most of the projects we are doing, if the, if the budget is to be done for in five years, they will be done in 10 years. What we are seeing in judiciary, where we, the judiciary is complaining that parliament did not, did not uh, give them money for development projects. Most of the donor-funded projects in judiciary have already uh, elapsed. The period they were supposed to be done elapsed, and they, d they were not even swift enough to renew those, those contracts, uh, uh, the loan contracts. So we are, there's a question of inefficiency in government, which really needs to be addressed. And we have tried to do it in the, in the, in the we did it in the uh, tax amendment laws. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have tried to uh, bring, uh, proposals to reform the project efficiencies. We are asking Treasury that for every big project they are doing, they must form um, an efficiency monitoring committee to, to so that the projects are done within the f uh, time, time frame which they are they're being budgeted and, and that will help in uh, getting rid of the pay for it. You wanted to say something horrible. <coughs> yes. Well, while I do agree to a large extent that uh, those are really good economic suggestions, uh, I, I think Mishima Atandi should be reminded that the debt GDP ratio stands today or by December at 62 percent mm -hmm. and it is growing at 15 percent when our GDP is growing at 9 percent 
and given some of the uh, adverse conditions like uh, farming suffering a lot, the growth might even come down to four, which therefore means that uh, we'll be growing the, the debt by 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 15 percent, and the growth on in terms of GDP will come down to about six. What does it do? It means in the next five years, the GDP debt ratio will almost be the same. Mm -hmm. Now, number two. Uh, what we, we, we are forgetting also is that in the next two years, some of the debt that was taken, now it, it, the grace period will be over. And therefore, the interest now is going to be loaded again onto the debt that we already have. To the extent that if we borrow, let's say, 200 billion from outside, or even from outside, we are likely to be paying about 400 billion mm -hmm. within, within the next uh, couple of years. That means uh, that the country is not likely to get out of the woods. Secondly, I think what I do want to agree with him, and I hope the government is listening, is that you find there are so many projects, leave alone the projects which are being launched for other reasons. <laughs> there are many projects which are already ongoing, and you find a project like this one of Ngong Road between Junction and Karen. It has been that way for the last two years, mm. which means what we are doing is that we are increasing the cost of that project. Mm -hmm. If it was supposed to be, let's say, uh, one billion or so, it is going to to the tune of it's going to double the amount that it is it's going to cost and and this is something that the government will start tightening so that we have fewer projects that we are completing in good time and we make savings to the taxpayer otherwise it is going to be impossible we'll go back to where we were with structural adjustment programs okay and yeah. maybe just to pick on what uh, on Abukiro has spoken about you know there was uh, the presidential decree or rather mm. directive yeah that um, all new projects be halted mm -hmm. and the ones continuing to actually be completed. Mm -hmm. And it takes me back to the efficiency and savings, as you say, so that the projects that have started take the shortest time possible mm -hmm. and they're efficient and you're able to make savings because the longer you take, the more expensive it becomes. But also it has another side of it. And I'll say that because I come from a constituency where I don't have an ongoing project. Mm -hmm. The people who are suffering are my people. Mm -hmm. When you say we have halted mm -hmm. every new project, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then it means the people of Gilgil have to wait forever to even start mm -hmm. even working on their drainage system, which is a mess. Mm -hmm. So we suffer. In fact, it's mm -hmm. something I've petitioned myself because a, a concern we need that could affect it is affecting your election it not just re-election. Probably they will, uh, it will affect the fact that you 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 are their representative. But in the they, they will say the government is doing nothing. It yet. is not about re-election. Mm -hmm. It is about the government delivering mm -hmm. on what it is supposed to deliver to pe to its people. It is about infrastructure it is about what is it or are we able to do to the people of Kenya because when you say mm -hmm. 10,000 kilometers of road and I don't get even one mm -hmm. then I wonder what exactly do you mean for us who are not having any continuing project we are suffering from mm -hmm. that directive mm -hmm. because I go to the Kera or to Kura today to check on construction of a drainage system and I'm told new projects have been halted so what do you tell and I do not have any corruption case mm -hmm. in Girugi <laughs> or any mm -hmm. continuing project, I am the one to suffer, my people are the ones to suffer. Mm -hmm. So it is something we also must uh, debunk mm -hmm. and break down. What do you mean exactly? Because mm -hmm. if Gong Road, a stretch is taking forever, mm -hmm. Gong Road cannot represent the whole of Kenya. Mm -hmm. You know, if mm -hmm. we have SDR that is taking forever, mm -hmm. it does not pass in every constituency. So we are still suffering mm -hmm. from that directive. Okay. You let, know? Me, let me say that there are two things that must be done. I support the president when, he's, when he said that all new projects must be stopped. And this is something that as a committee we had addressed with the CS Treasury. We wanted him to be bold enough and tell ministries that, look, we are unable to fund new projects. Because every financial year, mi ministries and departments generate new projects, mm -hmm. which are factored into the budget. And we told him that b b because of the state of uh, the ongoing projects, it was important for the ministry or the CS to decide that let us complete what we have before we can launch new projects. And I think what the president did was quite in order, because this is what the minister failed to do. We wanted a minister, and I think this is something that we must say, the Treasury CS must be bold enough mm -hmm. to be able to help this, uh, this, this economy to, to thrive, because there are certain decisions that he makes out of pressure from various ministries, which he should not mm -hmm. be able to do. Then the other issue is, uh, which I think also is important for Parliament, is that we need to reverse the way we are uh, making our budget. What needs to come first now is this finance bill. Parliament needs to discuss finance bill because this is the... Get the re revenue first. Re we get the revenue first before <laughs> we can do the expenditure <laughs> side because <laughs> we push for the expenditure <laughs> side and announce a very a humongous budget yeah. which now we are unable to fund. Look, we the $3 trillion budget will not be funded because now the re revenue proposals that have been recommended 
have been voted by parliament. by parliament. So what we are going to see next, we are going to have a supplementary budget to, so that we are able to, ch to change what, are, what already had been committed and people are, Kenyans have been told we are going to do this and this. Mm -hmm. So as parliament, we, this is something we have already made a recommendation that we must change the, 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 the process so that we begin with the revenue before we do the, okay. the, the expenditure. Okay, and uh, let's uh, leave that matter there. Of course, it's an ongoing debate. Parliament uh, rejected those proposals yesterday. We still wait to see what President Uhuru Kenyatta will do. Will he return uh, the same to Parliament with mm. different uh, uh, memoranda. memoranda or what will happen next? Uh, as far as we are concerned, it is a positive headline from uh, the Houses of Parliament, <laughs> especially <laughs> the National <laughs> Assembly. <laughs> and this is where we end our Friday today. But before we leave, uh, War on graft gets boost with UK pledge to repatriate stashed cash. And President Uhuru Kenyatta's renewed war on corruption yesterday received a major boost after Britain signed an agreement to repatriate all proceeds of crime stashed there. And you're talking about big amounts, uh, 400, uh, is it 400 million or 400 billion shillings? Uh, that is just one of those things. But uh, are you concerned that uh, some of this money, uh, yes, it may be a nice headline to return the money, but uh, that it will never get here. Well, uh, that is really a worrying trend because uh, how secure is, is, is the situation between us and Britain to say that uh, all this money will come back? There are cases like the ones on New Jersey mm -hmm. that are still there forever. And therefore, it means uh, some of the monies will not get back to Kenya. And uh, if it gets back to Kenya, how are we going to be assured? Mm -hmm. I think we may need to be having a record uh, mm -hmm. from Treasury that we have received so much so that it becomes a public discussion and also public pressure mounts on leaders. And uh, we should also be able to know who are these people keeping some accounts abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's not a crime to keep an account abroad, but if it's an account that is going to take away money from us, it's an account that we do not desire as, as a people of Kenya. So, but uh, overall, I'm happy the president has been actually on very diplomatic offensive uh, to the extent that uh, I think as Kenya, we are repositioning ourselves the right way. Yes. And he's also proceeding to China this yeah. year. But back in, fact, uh, mm. in fact, if you look at the trend for the mm. last two weeks, mm. it actually doesn't show we are east or west. It mm. is actually uh, making this visible mm. because from Trump to Theresa May now to China, I mean, it is it is an ongoing debate. I think it's very positive even in terms of uh, repositioning mm -hmm. the country and where it should be. But on this issue of draft, we had it in uh, New Jersey cases, we had it with Switzerland, mm -hmm. and what we need now is a mechanism to even know. Mm -hmm. Because how do we even tell this money ever came back? It, mm -hmm. may, it may even come back and disappear again. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. we need is to actually maybe work on something, even from Parliament, to actually put pressure that even Treasury, whenever this money is returned, we know exactly who has returned it, how mm -hmm. much has it uh, has been returned, and where will mm -hmm. it be appropriated to. Mm -hmm. And maybe NCCK <laughs> recently spoke about pardoning, but mm -hmm. it is good when you pardon that you also know. Because mm -hmm. it is proceeds, if it's proceeds of corruption, mm -hmm. I think Kenyans deserve to know. Mm -hmm. Let us know these accounts from wherever and let the money be channeled to a clear account. Mm -hmm. Let it not be confused with other monies. We want to know how much has come back, how has it been reapportioned, and more importantly, who has yes. stashed it away? Yes. It I will think be very uh, important. Your I welcome is concerned with this. Yes, yes sir. And, uh, and I would like to welcome the cooperation between the UK government and the process of graft, which is stashed in, uh, in those countries. Obviously, there is no way Kenya government was going to address this issue if, there are, if there are the foreign missions countries are not cooperating. And I think this is going to work. In my view, those Kenyans who are keeping uh, stolen cash in foreign countries, I think they, they better begin to repatriate back the cash. But I saw that there was an amnesty that was provided by the government mm. so that those people who are keeping money abroad could bring back their money. I, I was, I'm not sure if, if the money is, if you are keeping stolen money in Europe and the ga Kenya government has told you that there's an amnesty for you to bring it back, is it coming back as your money or is it going back, coming back as government money? Mm -hmm. Because if there's evidence that this is money that you stole it, you, you, you actually stole it. So I think that's, that needs to be clear. So that as you give an amnesty, uh, the money is coming back to whose pocket? Is it come back? If it comes back to my pocket, obviously in Kenya, well, th there's some implications in, in the in, in the economic uh, ma mathematics. But what is it? Is that money going back to the public? Because that's that's the, the biggest question. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be very clear. That amnesty, I saw it, and I, I think I was not. It was not very clear to me that mm -hmm. how helpful it was going to 
to be mm -hmm. uh, to the economy or to the government. Wow. Yeah, but otherwise, all these engagements are positive. Yes. And uh, it, it is going to be important that if you are uh, you're stealing uh, public money, you don't have to take it out of the country. Keep it here. So you steal, but keep it so here. If you, you have, if you have house. to steal, <laughs> just steal and keep it here. <laughs> but you don't have to, so the, the, if all those inter, uh, international networks are locked, yeah. mm -hmm. then really you have no option to steal money and take it out there. Of course, here now it's very hard to steal. Because if you steal money, you take it to a, uh, uh, in, in your bank, your country will be found. And even if you keep it in your house, I'm even being told that there are cases where some people, some few mongers amounts of money were found yes. in, in some politicians' <laughs> houses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that shows you that uh, really you <laughs> cannot <laughs> hide. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to hide. What 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 in their houses. <laughs> yes. yes, it is yes. another positive headline, uh, the fact that uh, uh, Kenya and the UK have signed a deal to ensure return of corruption proceeds, but whether or not that will directly pro uh, uh, profit uh, uh, the government of Kenya, uh, as opposed to individual pockets, uh, I think my panelists are in agreement yeah. that is still not clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is where we wrap up our news review this morning. But uh, final comments, uh, start uh, with Bonakil. Well, final comments is that uh, I think the president should focus not only on the issue of corruption, but given this humongous amount of money, uh, because we are also hearing, what he should do is that we should almost uh, change the currency, I know it will cost the government something, but we change the currency because if somebody is giving, a, is keeping a billion shillings in, in his cash. house mm -hmm. in cash mm -hmm. and in Kenya shillings, then that is dangerous even to our economy and even dangerous to the lives of Kenyans because the, such a person can do anything with that money uh, overnight. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we should change because one time India decided to change the face of the note mm -hmm. and give people a chance to bring back the money. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that it money was, was it was going to be useless. Mm. Okay. I think the president should do that. Wow. Yeah. I actually thought at some point there was a proposal that uh, we should mop up the, all the 1,000 notes and mm -hmm. maybe do a 2,000 note. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, just send into confusion. Because if you have 700 million in your house, <laughs> in 500,000, yes. you know, or in 100 shillings, uh, denominations, mm -hmm. it's bulky. Mm -hmm. But maybe if you do that, then it will have to mop up the money because mm -hmm. it is being said that we say there's a lot of money, but yet we can't see it. Uh, nobody's yeah. spending it in the hardware, mm -hmm. nobody's spending People it. Are stashed People it are stashed house. it in the yes. house. So just to make it useless, it's a, a discussion that we should have. But maybe we should also take the advantage to remove, um, to deal with the currency issue of having the portrait oh, yeah, as oh, in the constitution. Uh, yeah. It could be the right time to deal with that. But <laughs> <laughs> it is a discussion that we will continue. Mm. And uh, okay. allow me to say that this being the weekend, we'll be in Gilgil, of course, and on Sunday we'll be launching our sports tournament for CDF Not a in, no new project. in Monanda. <laughs> <laughs> That's a CDF project. In mm. Monanda, in uh, Element Data. Well, you know, when you say new projects, we almost thought even CDF projects have been stopped. Uh, no. So we need clear guidelines <laughs> of what new projects mm. are. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Two things as I close. One, uh, I want to talk to banks. Uh, we did not repeal the interest cap law, but we decided to remove the floor on the lower ceiling. Uh, the, the lower ceiling on pricing of savings and deposits. I want to urge banks to transfer that benefits to, to, to consumers because now you have a bigger spread, you have a bigger spread that you can play with in the, to manage the uh, pricing risk which has been a big uh, problem for you to price for loans to SMEs. So please take advantage of this uh, uh, amendment and let us see our SMEs uh, benefiting from this am amendment because we saw it fit that uh, uh, the price risk which you have associated with the dwindling focus on uh, giving loans to SMEs will be addressed. So please take advantage of this and ensure that our economy begins to thrive. Okay. The biggest problem for uh, banks is that they are so they are so incorrigible, they are so strict in the way they are approaching the SME businesses. And I think this is really hurting uh, the economy. Okay. And then lastly, we are going on recess. Uh, we have gone on recess uh, mm -hmm. from yes. yesterday. Oh. And oh. Uh, uh, for one, one month, month. Yeah. and uh, this is an opportunity for us to go and engage with our constituents. And I know most MPs are traveling, we are going to engage with our constituents, we are going to listen to their issues, so that by the time we come back, we come back as rejuvenated people, so that we can continue to <laughs> work for Kenya. And lastly, I want to ask the President to bring back, uh, recommit the, the uh, finance bill back to Parliament, so that we can be able to correct those errors that uh, members uh, Parliament uh, yeah. rejected are, you, are you certain it will get uh, the, uh, yeah, the we appropriate numbers? We will, have, we, will, we, got, we will have another opportunity to explain to members of parliament why we need to pass those tax proposals. Because otherwise we do not want yeah. to this, go into this business of every year, every time having to re revise the budget. You know, okay. Last year 
Parliament revised the budget almost three times. This time, I think it's going to be more. And okay. I think development must happen and the country must be able to grow. Thank okay. you. Honorable Samatandi MP Alegu Songa, also a member of the Finance Committee of the National Assembly. Martha Wangare, Honorable uh, MP for Gilgil Constituency, and Kipruto Rapkirua, former Agriculture Minister and also Deputy Party Leader ANC, helping us look at the issues behind the headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, daybreak still continues. Remember, Fashion Friday is still coming up. A fashion for pregnant women. Do stand by for that. As well as Level Up Friday. Yes, to kick start your weekend, do stand by for that as well. The hashtag to use is still daybreak. Good morning.